Hi, my name is Jamil, and today in this section, we'll be looking at the absolute value function in great detail. Our objectives will be the following. The graph of y equals the absolute value of f of x, properties of absolute value, equations and inequalities involving absolute value, and then an application involving absolute value. Let's take a look at the definition of the absolute value function. The absolute value function is given by the following. f of x equals the absolute value of x, which equals x when x is greater than or equal to 0, and it equals negative x when x is less than 0. Furthermore, the absolute value of the function f of x is equal to f of x when f of x is greater than or equal to 0, or negative f of x when f of x is less than 0. Let's take a look at an example. Here we're asked to find the graph of f of x equals the absolute value of x minus 4 squared minus 3, and then we're asked to state the domain and the range of the function. Now, in order to do this, what we need to do is make a graph of f of x ignoring the absolute value first, and then find all the values beneath the x-axis and reflect those over the x-axis. Here you see the graph of f of x equals x minus 4 squared minus 3 already drawn for us. Notice that it's a parabola with a vertex located at the point 4, negative 3. Now, we've been asked to draw the function f of x equals the absolute value of x minus 4 squared minus 3. Now, in order to do that, what we're going to need to do is find all the values below the x-axis and reflect them above the x-axis. So, for instance, the value 4, negative 3 will keep the same x value 4, but the negative 3 will reflect above the x-axis and become positive 3. So that point will end up at 4, positive 3. Now, what I'll do is I'll trace over the parabola in blue uh, the resulting new graph, the absolute value graph. So all the values above the x-axis will stay the same. So we'll keep all of these values. But now all the values below the x-axis will reflect upward. So our new graph will go up to that point 4, positive 3. And then reflecting this branch as well, it will go back down and meet at the uh, x-intercept. And now, since this branch is above the x-axis, this will remain part of the absolute value graph. So the graph shown in blue is the graph of the absolute value of 4, I'm sorry, x minus 4 quantity squared minus 3. Why don't you take a look at this next example. Given the following graph of f of x, sketch by hand the graph of absolute value of f of x. Give this a try and check back with me when you've completed it. Let's see how you've done. We're going to take the same approach to doing this graph. We're going to start with the original, uh, the original graph, which is seen here drawn in red. And what we're going to do is notice that this is a parabola with a vertex at the point 1, negative 2. So what we need to do is we need to go ahead and flip all the values below the x-axis above the x-axis. So the point 1, negative 2 will reflect and become the point 1, 2. So that's over 1 and up 2. And now what we'll do is we'll trace over the graph of the absolute value of f of x in blue. So all of these values above the x-axis get to stay. And then when the values go below the x-axis, we need to reflect those above. So that branch will flip up like this. And again, this vertex that was at 1, negative 2 is now located at 1, positive 2. And now reflecting this piece of the parabola as well. And now this branch is above the x-axis, so it gets to stay. So the absolute value of f of x is shown here by the traced graph in blue. There are several properties that absolute value functions follow as well. We'll now take a look at these properties in the next several slides. Properties of absolute value. For all real numbers a and b, the first property is the absolute value of a times b is equal to the absolute value of a times the absolute value of b. In other words, the absolute value of a product is equal to the product of absolute values. The second property we'll look at is the absolute value of a divided by b is equal to the absolute value of a divided by the absolute value of b, where b does not equal 0. This can be stated by saying the absolute value of a quotient is equal to the quotient of the absolute values. The third property is that the absolute value of a is equal to the absolute value of negative a. Uh, stated differently, the absolute value of a number is equal to the absolute value of its additive inverse. And then the fourth property we'll be looking at is the absolute value of A plus the absolute value of B 
is greater than or equal to the absolute value of A plus B. This is called the triangle inequality, and it can be stated by the following. The sum of the absolute values of two numbers is greater than or equal to the absolute value of their sums. Now that you've seen some of these properties of absolute values, we'll use these properties to solve equations and inequalities. Let's look at some of the steps. Solving absolute value equations and inequalities. Let k be a positive number. To solve the absolute value of ax plus b equals k, solve the compound equation ax plus b equals k or ax plus b equals negative k. Then to solve the absolute value of ax plus b is greater than k, solve the compound inequality ax plus b is greater than k or ax plus b is less than negative k. Then, to solve the absolute value of ax plus b is less than k, solve the three-part inequality negative k is less than ax plus b is less than k. Inequalities involving the less than or equal to or the greater than or equal to are solved similarly using the equality part of the symbol as well. Let's go ahead and try an example that makes use of these properties. Solve each group of equations and inequalities analytically. Support your answers graphically. In the first one, we're given the absolute value of two, I'm sorry, the absolute value of negative two x plus seven equals three. So in order to solve this, we need to take this inequal, I'm sorry, this equation, absolute value of negative two x plus seven equals three, and write it as a compound equation. So what we'll get is negative two x plus seven equals three, and we'll get negative two x plus seven equals negative three. Now solving these two equations, uh, solving the first one, subtracting 7 from both sides, we get negative 2x equals negative 4. And then dividing both sides by negative 2, we get that x equals 2. For the other equation, again, we'll subtract 7 from both sides. And that will leave us with negative 2x equals negative 10. And then dividing both sides by negative 2, we end up with x equals positive 5. So our solution to this first equation is 2 and 5. x equals 2 and x equals 5. Let's now use the calculator to verify that solution. What you can see here is that I've input the two equations, absolute value of negative 2x plus 7. And for the second equation, I've done y equals 3. Graphing these together, um, you can see our absolute value equation as well as our, our uh, horizontal line, y equals 3. And the intersection points here, where these two graphs uh, cross, are the values x equals 2 and x equals 5. Let's now go ahead and take a look at example b. Here we're asked to use the absolute value of negative 2x plus 7 is greater than or equal to 3. So in order to do this, we need to uh, make a compound inequality. So we'll do negative 2x plus 7 is greater than or equal to 3. And at the same time, we'll do negative 2x plus 7 is less than or equal to negative 3. We'll now go ahead and solve each of these. So subtracting 7 from both sides, we get negative 2x is greater than or equal to negative 4. And then dividing both sides by negative 2, and remembering to flip the inequality sign, because we're dividing by a negative, we get that x is less than or equal to 2. Solving the other equation, uh, we'll subtract 7 from both sides, and we'll get negative 2x is less than or equal to negative 10. And now we'll divide both sides by negative 2. And that, again, uh, gives us x. And we have to flip the inequality again. So it becomes x is greater than or equal to 5. So what we have is that when x is less than or equal to 2, or x is greater than or equal to 5, the absolute value of negative 2x plus 7 is greater than or equal to 3. Uh, again, if we go to the calculator, we can verify that. Uh, you remember where the points of intersection were, 2 and 5, and you can see that less than 2, the absolute value graph is above the horizontal line, and when we're greater than 5, or when x is greater than 5, the absolute value graph is also above the horizontal line. So that would confirm that the absolute value of negative 2x plus 7 is greater than 3 in those regions. Um, in part C, we're given another inequality to solve. We're given the inequality absolute value of negative 2x plus 7 is less than or equal to 3. And in order to solve this, we'll set this up as a three-part inequality. So this will become negative 2x plus 7 is less than or equal to 3, but at the same time, it will also be greater than or equal to negative 3. Now, in order to solve this, we'll subtract 7 from each part of the inequality. 
And doing that, we'll get negative 3 minus 7 is negative 10, is less than or equal to, and that's going to be negative 2x when we subtract the 7, and that's less than or equal to. And now subtracting the 7 from 3, we end up with negative 4 here. Now dividing each part of this inequality by negative 2, and remembering to flip the signs as we go along, we get that 10, a negative 10 over negative 2 is a positive 5, and that's greater than or equal to when we flip the sign, and then we end up with x in the middle, and flip the sign again, which is greater than or equal to, and then negative 4 divided by negative 2 is a positive 2. So the region where the absolute value of negative 2x plus 7 is less than or equal to 3 is in the values between, where x is between positive 5 and positive 2. And again, when we go to the graphing calculator, we can verify this rather easily. Remembering that the intersection points are 5 and 2, you can see that it's between the points x equals 2 and x equals 5 that our absolute value equation is below the line, uh, the horizontal line y equals 3. Let's now go ahead and take a look at what happens when we try to solve an equation that has absolute values on both sides of the equation. Solve the absolute value of ax plus b equals the absolute value of cx plus d. To solve an equation where we have absolute value of ax plus b equals absolute value of cx plus d, analytically, we need to solve the following compound equation. ax plus b equals cx plus d, or ax plus b equals negative the entire quantity cx plus d. Let's go ahead and try to use this by uh, looking at the next example. Here we're asked to solve the absolute value of x plus 6 equals the absolute value of 2x minus 3. Now we're going to break this down into a compound equation, and the first part of that equation is given here. We're going to start by solving x plus 6 equals 2x minus 3. So in order to solve this, what we'll do is we'll subtract x from both sides, and that will give us that 6 equals uh, 2x minus x is x, and we have x minus 3, and now we'll add 3 to both sides, and we'll end up with 6 plus 3 is 9, and for this part, x equals 9. Now, looking at the other part of the compound equation, we have to take the absolute value of x plus 6 equals absolute value of 2x minus 3 and break it into the following. x plus 6 equals negative the quantity of 2x minus 3. Well, to start this one, we'll recopy the left-hand side, and then we'll distribute the negative on the right-hand side. So that'll give us negative 2x and a positive 3. And now we'll start by adding 2x to both sides. And that gives us 3x plus 6 on the left-hand side. And it gives us a positive 3 on the right-hand side. Subtracting 6 in an attempt to get x alone, we get that 3x equals, and then 3 minus 6 is negative 3. And now dividing both sides by 3, we get 3x equals negative 3, divide left and right side by 3, and we end up with x equals negative 1. So the solution set for this equation is given by the values x equals negative 1 and x equals 9 from the previous equation. Let's now go ahead and take a look at an application that uses absolute value. Here we're given the inequality, absolute value of x minus 49 is less than or equal to 20, describes the range of averages, I'm sorry, describes the range of average monthly temperatures x in degrees Fahrenheit for Santa Fe, New Mexico. Solve this inequality and interpret the result. So what we need to do is we need to start with the inequality, absolute value of x minus 49 is less than or equal to 20. And what we'll do is we'll turn this inequality into a three-part inequality. So we'll end up with negative 20 is less than or equal to x minus 49, which is less than or equal to 20. Now, in order to solve this, what we need to do is add 49 to both sides. So adding the 49 to both sides, what we end up with is negative 20 plus 49, that's 29, which is less than or equal to, and then the middle becomes x when we add 49 to that section, which is less than or equal to, and now 20 plus 49 is 69. So what this tells us is that the average monthly temperatures always lie between 29 degrees Fahrenheit and 69 degrees Fahrenheit. In this section, you've got a chance to look at absolute value functions in great detail. You should practice the examples in your textbook, and I'll see you next time.